Morning, everybody. We have been scattered, but this is not the first time God forced us to move. Thanks for being with us today on the West Winds Breviary Online. We are looking in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the believers were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I want you to imagine this scene so that you see the movie appropriately in your mind. Here they are gathered in one home, a massive crowd of Christian people. They're excited, they're nervous, they're a little scared, and they're unsure what's going to happen next. What will happen next? Well, I don't think any of them would have expected some sort of Holy Ghost tornado, a supernatural manifestation of God's presence that includes mighty rushing wind and huge tongues of fire. That seems beyond the pale of what anyone would have thought could ever possibly happen. And yet, that's exactly what occurs. And even though we get really fixated most often on the tongues of fire or, or on the, the mighty rushing wind, let's slow down a little bit and, and read those first few words again. When the day of Pentecost arrived. Now, Pentecost is significant. This is one of the ancient Israelite uh, rituals and celebrations. It's the, it's the festival of first fruits. It's a harvest festival. This is the time when, when farmers would go out and they would see evidence that their crop was going to come in and be healthy. And so then they would gather the first fruits of their crop, take it to the temple or the tabernacle, and make a sacrifice. This is the first proof that it's going to be a good year. This, in Acts chapter 2, is the first proof that this is going to be a great church. Here we are with evidence that Jesus has made good on his promise to send another comforter. This is proof positive, the first evidence that Jesus has made good on his promise that greater things than these will you do in my name. Because once upon a time, if you wanted access to the power of Jesus, you had to be standing right next to him. If you wanted access to the wisdom or the insight or the guidance or the counsel of Jesus, you had to be following behind him, getting the dust from his sandals all over your robe. Even after the resurrection, Jesus is only appearing a handful of times, I think 11 times to his disciples over the period of about a month. So, so all those other times, they don't get access to Jesus. They don't get to witness Jesus, hear Jesus, benefit from Jesus' insights, teachings, from him, his spurring on his conviction. But, but now there's a totally new distribution method of God's Spirit and Jesus' power. Now the Spirit of Jesus is on the disciples and in the disciples. Now the Spirit of Jesus is constantly inside of them, coaching them, coaxing them, leading them, convicting them, inspiring them, and, and not just them, but you, you and me. Now the Spirit of God is on all people, everywhere, always, in every place. We just have to make sure that we pay attention and don't, don't miss it. And the reason I think this is so cool is that this, this power that was in them and is in us is in their homes and in our homes too. See, we see a huge Pentecost-like phenomenon occurring now through the pandemic of COVID-19. This plague has got you locked up at home. And many people are terrified and concerned. Oh no, the church has been closed. That's not true. The churches haven't been closed. The churches have just been planted. A thousand, a million new churches have just been planted all over the planet in your living room. Pastors and priests are rising up from their sofas to lead their families. Young men, young women, old men and old women are recognizing that the spirit of prophecy, of provocation, of wisdom and of guidance rests in them. The older are taking responsibility for the younger. The younger are looking to the older for wisdom and insight and skill. We are families. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. And here we saw the first fruits, the evidence that Jesus was making good on his promise to, to provide the Spirit. Now today, in 2020, we see evidence that Jesus is making good on his promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. That's you. And that's me. Nothing is going to keep you down. Nothing is going to hold back the Spirit of Jesus in you and in his church. This is the time where we get to radically reimagine what it means to be faithful followers of Jesus for our day and for our time. This is the moment where you are being called, summoned, equipped, and purposed by God 
to do greater things than you ever thought were possible. One of the things that is uh, repeatedly uh, highlighted um, in the scripture as a a practice of God's people uh, is the idea of building altars. Uh, They would um, place these um, sets of stones uh, in different places, always as a remembrance of something um, that God had done. And and the practice was was twofold. One, it, it was a remembrance for them. Uh, that God had done something for them if they if they walked past back past by where the altar was set up or 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 if they saw it um, they they would know that but also it was for other people even if other people didn't know what had happened there other people who uh, were worshipers of God would would see this and go something God did something there um, that was worth noting and I've always really liked um, that idea of, of of setting up altars so um here I have uh, one of the many altars that, that I keep uh, in, in my office, uh, and this is uh, baptism water, um, and it's um, the water from when I baptized my son, and uh, I was able to do that um, right, right here at West Winds, uh, and I'll never forget that day. It, it was it was something that that was really special to me, uh, and 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 on that day we were collecting water and, and giving people these vials, and um, I've kept this now for um, t- twelve years uh, that I've had this in my office, and and uh, so as we think today about reflecting on 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 baptism, um, here's how it it works for me. Uh, every time I see this water and I notice it in my office, which isn't every day, but, but it's often, um, I take a minute, um, I pick it up, and, and I thank God for the fact um, that, that he loves us. I thank God for his um, salvation. Uh, I, I thank God for the fact that, um, that, that he isn't done with any of our stories, that he's not done with my, my son's story. 
And I just spend a minute um, just, just reflecting on that. And then quite often, um, people, some, some believers, some not believers, will come into my office and they'll say, what's that? What's that thing there? And I get the opportunity to tell them what it is and uh, tell them why it matters to me and tell them what God is doing in my life, what God's done in the, uh, the life of my family. Uh, so my encouragement to you is to put some altars up. Um, and maybe there's a way that you can put one up specifically that has to do with your baptism. Now, you might not have a jar of water like this, but um, maybe there's another way that you can do that. If you were baptized here, you probably have a photo. Put that somewhere um, where you can see it. Uh, if there's a passage of scripture that connects you to um, the, the moment you took that step with, with, with Jesus, then, then use that. Uh, maybe you're one of the people who has not yet been baptized. Maybe you um, were planning on doing that here at Westwinds uh, on Easter and, and were able to. Uh, then I'd encourage you to find a way to, to set up some sort of an altar that represents your ambition uh, to follow Jesus in that way. The good news goes forth, powerful and provocative, spoken in each tongue to grunts, noobs, trolls, vicks, and docs, till we are healed, till we're whole. So God bless you. Grace and peace, everyone. May you be equipped. May you be ennobled. And may you be empowered to be the church today.